All right, everybody, welcome back. In this episode, we're taking Jeremiah chapter 52. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the historical appendix here. In a, in a sense, the book of Jeremiah is already finished with the 51 chapters. There is a 52nd chapter, the scribe of which we don't know. It's classically, conically um, part of the book of Jeremiah. It appears to be something that a scribe added, like an appendix to the book. It includes essentially the material that's found in 2 Kings chapter 24, verses 18 through 30, all the way through chapter 25, verse 30. And there are a few things that are different, uh, a few details added, and there are a few things that might appear to be discrepancies, but not really when they are studied. And it appears that this historical appendix is here to demonstrate the fulfillment of God's prophecies. And the context is the conclusion of a 40 years ministry by Jeremiah in which he particularly predicted that Zedekiah would be defeated by Nebuchadnezzar and that Judah would fall to Babylon. So Jeremiah throughout his whole ministry was in effect, he was harassed by a large group of false prophets emphasizing the opposite of what Jeremiah was predicting. The false prophets were predicting a, in detailed, articulate terms that King Zedekiah would be victorious over King Nebuchadnezzar, and they could easily draw many analogies in Israel's history, particularly the one that surfaces in Isaiah when he comforted Hezekiah by pointing out that it was going to be all right, and it was. So how dangerous it is to accept at face value an appealing message, something very prevalent today. Okay, so verse 1. Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hamudal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. So this is not the Jeremiah that was the author of the book. Jeremiah was apparently a common name, and this is a different Jeremiah. And again, Zedekiah is the brother of Jehoahaz and Jehoiakim, and therefore he's the son of, the, of Josiah, and thus he's an heir to the throne. Verse 2. And he did that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. Right? Zedekiah was not a winner. <clears throat> Verse 3. For through the anger of the Lord it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah, till he cast them out of his presence, that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. So Zedekiah is here accredited with ignoring Jeremiah and listening to the false prophets. Verse 4 and 5. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all of his army, against Jerusalem, and he pitched against it, and built forts against it round about. So the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. So that's a long time. It's almost two years. Now the fall of Jerusalem recorded uh, four times in the Old Testament. It's in Second Kings 25, Second Chronicles 36, Jeremiah 39, and chapter 52. All right, verse 6. In the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, the famine was sore in the city, so that there was no bread for the people of the land. All right, so the city is under siege. It was sealed off. There was famine. There was cannibalism. There was anguish of the mothers watching their children starve to death. There was pestilence and disease. Verse 7 through 9. Then the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled, and went forth out of the city by night, by the way of the gate between the two walls, which was by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans were by the city round about, and they went by the way of the plain. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king, and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. Then they took the king and carried him up unto the king of Babylon, to Riblah, into the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. In other words, Nebuchadnezzar had his command post in Riblah, some distance from the actual siege going on in Jerusalem. And here is where we have recorded where Zedekiah is judged. All right, verse 10, 11. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He slew also all the princes of Judah in Riblah. And then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and the king of Babylon bound him in chains, carried him to Babylon, and put him in prison till the day of his death. So this is the fulfillment of the prophecy that Zedekiah would not see the Babylonian captivity, though he would die there. Okay. Verse 12 through 14. Now in the fifth month of the tenth day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon into Jerusalem, and burned the house of the Lord in the king's house. 
and all the houses of Jerusalem and all the houses of the great men burned he with fire and all the army of the Chaldeans that were the captain of the guard broke down the walls of Jerusalem round about so their obvious intention was to destroy it so that it would never be rebuilt again Nebuchadnezzar had endured three rebellions he had enough of this and this time it was over so he burns it to the ground verse 15 and 16 then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captives, certain the poor of the people, and the residue of the people that remained in the city, and those that fell away, that fell to the king of Babylon, and the rest of the multitude. But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left certain of the poor of the land for vine dressers and for husbandmen. Right? Remember that this was also a prophecy. Nebuzaradan did not know he was fulfilling prophecy here. Right? Verse 17 to 22. Also the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases, and the brazen sea that was in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans break, and carried all the brass of them to Babylon. The cauldrons also, and the shovels, the snuffers, the bowls, the spoons, and all the vessels of brass wherewith they ministered, took they away. And the basins, and the firepans, and the bowls, and the cauldrons, and the candlesticks, and the spoons, and the cups that was of gold in gold and that was of silver in silver took the captain of the guard away the two pillars one sea and twelve brazen bulls that were under the bases which king solomon had made in the house of the lord the brass of all these vessels was without weight and concerning the pillars the height of one pillar was eighteen cubits and a fillet of twelve cubits did compass it and the thickness thereof was four fingers it was hollow <clears throat> and a chapter of brass was upon it and the height of one chapter was five cubits, and the network of pomegranates upon the chapters round about of all brass, and the second pillar also, and the pomegranates were like unto these. So chapitar, or top of bronze, it's two pillars, Jacon and Boaz, they had names, which meant strength and counsel, and that was part of the porch. And there is a structure of the temple that becomes the structure of the believer in contrast to the structure of the unbeliever in terms of the body, soul, and spirit. The body, soul, spirit, heart, and mind in the scripture, they have very precise meanings, and they mean some things that are different from what you and I may normally perceive. The Holy Spirit has diagrammed us, if you will, in the temple. All right. Verse 23, And there were ninety and six pomegranates on one side, and all the pomegranates that were upon the network were a hundred round about. Right? So the temple implements returned under Cyrus the Persian in Ezra chapter 1. You can compare that with Babylon in Daniel chapter 5. All right, verse 24 through 30. And the captain of the guard took Sariah the chief priest, and Zephaniah the second priest, and three keepers of the door. He took out the city a eunuch, which had charge of the men of war, and seven men of them, which were near the king's person, which were found in the city, and the principal scribe of the host, who mustered the people of the land, and threescore men of the people of the land, that were found in the midst of the city. So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took them, and brought them to the king of Babylon, to Riblah. And the king of Babylon smote them, and put them to death at Riblah, in the land of Hamath. Thus Judah was carried away captive out of his own land. And this is the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive in the seventh year, 3,000 Jews and 3 and 20. In the 18th year, Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away captive from Jerusalem, 830 and two persons. In 3 and 20th year of Nebuchadnezzar's, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive of the Jews, 740 and five persons. And all the persons were 4,600. So these numbers are the only the Jews and only the males so that alone implies that there was a lot more than mentioned here <clears throat> verse 31 and it came to pass in the 7 and 30th year of the captivity of Jehoiachin king of Judah in the 12th month in the 5 and 20th day of the month that evil Merodach king of Babylon in the first year of his reign lifted up the head of Jehoiachin king of Judah and brought him forth out of prison so evil Merodach sounds like a strange name in the English, but it's actually Avil Marduk in the Babylonian records. Evil is not an adjective in describing his character. It's a, it's a name. Merodach is the Hebrewization of Marduk. And so he was a son or two down from Nebuchadnezzar. All right. Verse 32 to 34. And spake kindly to him, and set his throne above the throne of kings that were with him in Babylon, and changed his prison garments, and he did continually eat bread before him all the days of his life. And for his diet there was a continual diet given him of the king of Babylon, every day a portion until the day of his death all the days of his life. 
So there's a Jewish tradition that during the period that Nebuchadnezzar was indisposed, that Daniel was the one who cared for him. Evil Marduk uh, was in charge for a while, but there is also a tradition that he screwed up and got caught doing something that he shouldn't have and was put in prison for a while. While in prison, he gets acquainted with Jehoiachin, so later on when he gets out and Nebuchadnezzar dies and evil Marduk is in charge, he remembers Jehoiachin in prison. He doesn't free him, but he takes him out of prison and puts him on special rations. After all, he's a king in exile under arrest, but he's not abused. And all that is just a tradition, of course. The cuneiform tablets were found with lists of the rations that evil Marduk provided Jehoiachin, and his daily diet has been found. Okay, And so that is the book of Jeremiah. Thank you for joining me.